Hi, Sportster Paul here. We've got a 1982 Iron Sportster. Today we're getting the rocker boxes off the heads. Uh, the two, two quick tricks there. There's an oil port on the exhaust rocker, which exhaust here, exhaust rocker here, little hole drilled. You can accidentally swap that and get that on the intake of the other head. So don't do that and make sure that little hole is clear and blown out. I, every bike I've worked on has had some grunge in there obscuring that hole. Uh, the other trick you might have to do, right? I want to get this out right away. If, if this shaft, sometimes when you turn this nut here to, to take out the rocker shaft, the whole shaft moves. Uh, you can, if you don't have an impact, you can get a wrench and, let's see, this way, <laughs> you get a, a wrench and a hammer, whack it, and hopefully that's snapping. Otherwise, I've got an old electric DeWalt, you know, corded DeWalt uh, impact wrench half inch, and you can neck it down and get to this, I think it's five eighths here. And the impact usually works fine. It'll get this nut loose. So that's the two quick what's coming up. I did dig in my stash and want to show you some stuff. And I did read the book, finally, that I recommended last time, the service manual, and as important, the parts manual for the years by Harley Davidson. Pay for them, they're worth it. <clears throat> the, the, the service manual says you take the heads out this way, from the left side of the engine. I always had problems because this exhaust port hangs down a little, right? You could see it on the, the left cam here. So I always took them out this way. Now you can't do that 77 and later because it's got these studs and while digging, I found the motor mounts. This is the rear motor mount. Can you see it right there? It goes in, I believe, like this, with the slots facing that way. Uh, you can, if, if the way I always remember is going this way, you can unbolt this and these two, because the frame's offset, you can actually get these two studs out. So that's the rear motor mount for, I think, most years into the 80s. Here's the front motor mount, 79, 80. Then it went wider when they changed the frame and they got more meat in, in the frame underneath. That goes on the other head. Can you see this? That goes right here. Boy, this thing's bent up bad. What did I do wrong? Oh, okay. It goes right here. You can see it there. Is the sky cam? Ah, uh, sky cam can't quite catch it. But let's see if we can bring it in so the sky cam sees it, just barely. Now, the, the trick with all of this stuff is you bolt the back of the motor motor mounts, those big 3 8 bolts, get them tight. You go to the front, you don't bend stuff, you shim with washers or whatever you have to do so there's no, you're not tightening a bolt and bending the motor one way or the other. And then the same principle up here, when you get this top motor mount, <clears throat> this is back to the head stuff. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself last show. So here, same thing, if, if there's a gap here or something wrong, you put washers to that frame rail that's coming along here. You don't just reef it in and bend the whole motor and pull the frame. Never. Not in big bike transmissions. You know, don't put stress on things. If, if only, and the reason this whole system is so bad compared to the 76 and earlier, by holding the rocker box bolts, it wears out the rocker box gaskets. The vibration, especially if you get loose bolts down in your motor mounts, up down in the bottom, then this stuff starts shaking and you get all kinds of oil leaking out and the rear one, you can't get the rocker box off. You might, you know, pry it up a little bit, get a little silicone in there, but I hate silicone. If that gets in the motor, you could burn up your motor. Uh, same thing here. Uh, this one I have been known. See, does it go like this or does it go like this? I think it must go like this, right? Because the frame rail's offset. So let me get this one on the sky cam. There you go. Here, and, and you know, it's not just plain bolts, obviously. I think they're studs. The parts book will, will explain it. <clears throat> but it, it also has some spacers and all that has to be right. And the same thing. Now, here you can see I took a torch to this, right? Over here. To bend it, to, to get it parallel to the bottom of the fork, the, the front frame, and to then allow just the right number of washers to slip in. Same thing, you're not prying up on this. That's just a formula for disaster. So let's get this stuff back. We're not gonna put it together like this. 
we're not going to, that doesn't go in our parts bin here. Also, while I was digging around looking for that stuff to show you, I found my manifold stash, and I hear this. This one, this manifold not only has the fiber thing that decouples heat, keeps heat from getting from the motor into the carb, sometimes it's worked better. So, you know, started with Tillotson's. But this is the later model manifold, right? Rubber band, 79 and later, I think, which should be, the heads are different. The heads doesn't have the O-ring groove. Here, I can show you. Right there, right? So there's, there's the groove for the O-ring. Oops, wrong, wrong one. There's a the groove for the O-ring. This one is for the rubber band. And I'm gonna pause the video because I'll go get the gaskets. I think they're in the other desk there. But meanwhile, we're keeping the cast iron. Most of these are aluminum. I found the old cast iron one. Just for grins, I thought I'd keep that here. So let me get this buttoned up and I'm gonna go grab some gaskets just to show you that, just to be a little more thorough than we were last show. Okay, while I got these books out, you know, this is like for the first time in ages, I actually read this thing. There's pain in, like in the service manual, right? Cylinder head removal. F number one, strip motorcycle as described in stripping motorcycle for engine pair, steps one through 11. Like a lot of technical people who don't have empathy, they don't tell you where that is. Is it in the back of the book? Is it? So then you're allowed to take your pen and after you, you know, three minutes later, you find it. Oh, that's on page 3-11, which turns out to be a little bit ahead of here. And here it is in the middle of the page, stripping motorcycle for engine repair. And that's pretty much, you know, tank off, uh, pipes, stuff like that. So that, these parts book, which will show you how all this goes together. It gives you the lengths of the bolt. Some, sometimes, Ah, matter of fact, you can see one I did here. Skycam? Barely. Maybe this one's a better one to do. See how this bolt here sticks way down? I started doing that, putting a longer bolt here because it gets more threads. It can also be if, you've, if, if a short bolt stripped out, sometimes you can save the thing just by substituting a long bolt. So, there's that little trick. Next thing, never hurts to have along with your pen to mark up the service manual and make notes and quantities and all that. It's always good to have this. You, you can say, uh, okay, Skycam can see this. Look at those head bolts were so hard to get out because they were rubbing against here. And even though this is a machined operation, trying to guarantee that those bolts are clear, you might want to remind yourself, uh, grind, grind, head, bolt clearance in rocker box, rocker box. No shame, right? Because you're gonna forget, just like I left these loose because I did something. Oh yeah, I, I loosened one of these. Maybe this is it, yeah. To clank it so I could get that bolt out. You know, you might want to note, hey, I didn't tighten stuff. So. We got that going. How's the sky cam? Not bad. So I went, I wanted to show you some of the gaskets and this is an opportunity. This show's kind of getting to show you a failure. Here it is. The theory was let's get some clear plexiglass and let's make gasket boxes. Clear plexiglass Designed so a 11 by 17 sheet of paper fits inside. This is a spare. This is some extra plastic I had. Wooden strips, I've, you know, I forget what Home Depot wood this is. Half inch by half inch probably, painted black. Terrible failure for multiple reasons. It's kind of flimsy, this is the first problem. But the real problem is the plastic is staticky, so all kinds of dust and junk get sucked to it. New design, which we'll make a show about, there's uh, baking trays, standard baking trays for big bakeries, and they will fit an 11, there's a certain, I don't know, half size, whatever they call it, will fit an 11 by 17 thing, piece of paper on the bottom. Theory there is you, I can print, right? I can actually print what gaskets go where, 
and lay that piece of paper or glue it down uh, and then lay the stuff on top to know what I'm missing, what I'm not missing. What a nice coincidence right here is the intake. What do we got? We got for the carburetor, this gasket here, see that? And then here's the rubber band, right? That goes on the rubber. It would fit on, but you don't want to leave that big gap. The kits that they make to switch an O-ring style, they give you two plastic little fillers to fill up where the O-ring should go and then the O-rings. I prefer, you know, like I say, if you run O-rings, you have to have straps or something to keep that carb from flopping. Either these later model heads that have a, a threaded hole right here that you can bolt the structure or the carb to the air filter. And then here's O-rings, plenty of, you know, the normal, ah, where are we? There we are, regular O-rings. And then here is a cool guy, genuine gaskets, genuine James. But James is good stuff. O-ring, intake manifold, Viton, V-I-T-O-N. Viton's better with all this alcohol they put in the gas, although I go to Wawa and get alcohol-free gas for bikes, lawnmowers, anything. So there's the Viton ones, and I got one, two, three, four of them in addition to, to these. So what's this carb kit stuff? What's this? Well, as a matter of fact, let's, let's be fancy since you might be curious. So the first one is just a spare. This is intake stuff. This one, how are we? There we go. This is carburetor stuff, rebuild kits. I bought a rebuild kit on uh, Amazon. I'm very disappointed. Now I'll be going to James Gasket, not James Gasket, uh, JP, JP, is that it? Yeah. Here, oh, the missing cylinder head gaskets. Here's the base gaskets, different, different styles and sizes, different kinds. There's some 600 cc. There's a different gasket for 72 only or 73 only. The first year 1000 cc, they kind of botched, like, you know, happens. These, I believe, are for, not O-rings. O-rings have corks. These are for, oh, those are probably for these right here. And here, ah, here's where I'm trying to help myself with, see, I, I just pencil sketched it in. But in theory, with a full-size printer, if I had a big printer, I could print this stuff out. Primary gaskets. Oh, by the way, I hot glued, I, I hot glued all these wooden frames on. They're popping off, right? They don't stick. So that's another failure. Here, 79 to 84. You might be able to see there. Uh, I think this is oil pump. Starter pocket. Here's, you know, the starter pocket thing. Here's the plug if you have an XLCH. These, I think, go on the electric starter. This is the, the one. They're kind of shuffled around because I've been carrying them for you. Here, you know, there's a little copper washer that goes there. This is the gear case cover, 77 to 84. It's got this here, a little bit different. The late model oil pump with the gear rotor. Here's the earlier stuff. And that's the bottom. So this is the earlier one, the generator, magneto gaskets. It's just a nice compact way. It keeps them covered up so no dust. They got the boards, you can buy them with a lot of money, like a shop. They got the boards, oh no, I don't want to do that. I want to keep the order the same. Uh, the boards are expensive and shops like them because you know you can look at a glance and see what you're missing. When the customer asks, you reach back and pull it out. But it also hangs them vertically, right? And I don't like that because there's enough grief getting vet gaskets to fit. So here way down the road after we get some of this all taken apart, we might be putting some stuff together. This is the empty top one. And these are some top end. Here's some corks, right? So let me get all of this adjusted, pulled off. These old steel desks are fantastic because this is a secretarial desk. So it's got this side thing all spring loaded and you pull it out and it goes down and then it pushes in ideal right now when i switch to those aluminum trays for the baking trays i think they're called half size then the static problem goes away but they also sell 
frames so the bakers can put, you know, 20 of these. Now they stack them a little bit higher. There may be some engineering because I don't need them stacked that high, but that's a future project we'll show you. Meanwhile, let's get back. Oh, I told you about being a cleanliness nut. Like I say, that's the one thing I disagree with a lot of the mechanic shows on YouTube. So this guy will put back in our thing. Nice clean towel, paper towel, cleaner than anything. Are we ready to begin? I know you're getting impatient. Uh, I warned you about the two things. The rocker box, make sure the exhaust rocker box with the little side drill hole, which we'll show you in a minute. Uh, I'm going to cheat. Usually I do everything by hand. Don't wear gloves. I never, you know, old school. Never got into that. Because I don't want to bore you folks. Oh, I know something to show you. I, on Amazon, I got this little adapter, so it has like the hex shape shaft. Where are we? Here. Hex shape shaft, and then this is a 3 8 it just takes. So we'll be able to zip these off. While I got this, the sockets, this isn't, I never made a video of it. Maybe I will, but these are Hanson socket trays. Let me take a picture of this. The red ones are English, the gray ones are metric. They hold the sockets on end and they're labeled. So these older sockets, before they made it really apparent what size they are, it can help you. So let's, let's get this with the part. Let's see. Okay, Lucy. Oh, the other thing I, it's always good to have some, I like the Ziploc ones for the parts that are going to come off of this. You know, it keeps, I don't know, you have to keep the front bolts to the front. We should obviously put this here for the bolts. Let's get this guy ripped off. Smoke is coming out. <laughs> Must have got oil or water in there. Deep well socket so you can get these guys. Never had, and by the way, DeWalt, which my impact is a corded DeWalt. I'm off of DeWalt now. I switched to Makita because DeWalt, this is an 18 volt. So I say, hey, let's, you know, get more 18 volt stuff. I go in the story the other month. Oh, now they're 20 volt. Two volt, yeah, that's stupid, right? That was just to stick it to us. They make an adapter so you can stick, how does it work? You can stick a 20 volt pack, I think, into an 18, a little, but it's a plastic adapt. No, just no more DeWalt. Don't use that. The way uh, Makita solved their problems, like for my lawn stuff, two 18 volt packs, click, click. Now you got way more power than you need and way more voltage, way more than 20. And here, can you see this? Now, I am a big believer in lock washers, old fashioned lock washers. Working at a military contractor, I learned they wear out. You're only supposed to use them once. If you just crush them and then, oh, I made a mistake, oh, go throw the other way, put a new lock washer on. So I also have grade eight. These look like AN size. They're not the big SAE size you get at Home Depot. So it, it, it won't take the standard kind of washers that you can get at uh, the hardware store. Here we are. Like I suspected, it's pretty much brand new, although not ready to go. Can you see it? Sky cam. Can you see it? Oh, let's get that out of the way. That'll help you out, won't it? Right? Something went wrong with this. And this gasket doesn't match anything wrong here. So I must have been swapping. And, you know, I'll take these and put them on that. Uh, the valve, everything here is, though, new. You can see a little overspray, brand new collars, brand new springs. The best diagnosing I ever did driving down San Carlos Boulevard, it felt like a bump in my butt occasional it was the outer spring had broken and occasionally it would rotate and coil bind bang bang and i actually could feel it and was on the way to the bike shop kind of asked them about it went back home and it's a pain because the rear head you can't get the box off so i i got the uh the head off and was pleased to see that i caught it in time and the inner spring because I, I don't rev the bike i'm not a racer guy so where are we at this is brand new. That's good to go. 
we're going to tear it all down, but just to, you know, just like you always check your weapons when you're drunk, practice like you play. Put that there. Uh, the first bolts, well, it'll be obvious this is the rear because it's got the studs, right? So we'll put that there to remind us. Get the rocker box here. There's some corks. I throw those away. Always new. Um, oh boy, is this stiff. I wonder why that's so stiff. I mean, it should almost be free. Same thing here. Really stiff. Throw this away. All right. The rocker boxes will fit on either head. You got to pay attention that the oil line is towards the inside. And like this rounded, where is it, Skycam? This rounded thing is on the outside, front or back. So there's also this for the drilled passage that uh, brings the oil, uh, you know, to the two rocker boxes. I've tried to get those out, and it's just so brutal. Even when I polish a head, I just leave them in, sand over it, and live with it. So let's see how good my memory is. Like I said, tools always go back in the toolbox, so put this on my Hanson socket tray. And if I remember, it's 5 eighths, isn't it? How about that? Now, if we're lucky, this will snap loose without spinning this. Ah, oh, it did. Otherwise, you get to see me. Might be nice if I did have the problem. Now, the reason these, these nuts have this red plastic cap is so there's no corrosion or dirt, and you can get this off without spinning this thing here. So now, there's the nut, right, with the little red cap. They make, you could use an acorn if you got a commercial acorn nut, or they make, you know, big showy kind of stuff. There's a washer, I'm almost sure. There should be. There it is. Thin washer, not a standard washer. Let's do this one. Sky cam on, yes. Side cam on, yes. Let's try it like this. Fine. Lucky me. Having this cap pressurizes the O-ring under it and kind of helps it, so I go to the nuts first. I should look in the book again and see. Is that what they say to do? I also lost track. This is the front or the back. Here's the washer. There's the nut. This is the back head, right? Because there's, there's the oil. So, good to know. I believe get my English bond house and get rid of this. After working at Howard Cooper Volkswagen in the 70s, I actually got pretty good about keeping the tools in the box. Is it this big? How about that? Okay. This is turning the whole thing, so we got... Oh no, it's not actually. I could have sworn it was turning the shaft because of the... See this, it's kind of new, but it's not set up right in my book. So good thing we got into it, right? So here comes this. You can see threaded. You can see here, there's an O-ring there. Hopefully we'll be just as lucky with this one. Get this going. Oh, this one's much easier. That usually means it's turning. No. So we lucked out on this one. Here, if it spins, I think you can tap it out and, and get it in your hands, right? So then, then you got to be careful holding the shaft in a vise. You don't want to scuff it up. You got to be careful. Uh, but you can also put heat on stuff, that, and that can help. This is why I use antices for everything. These are in pretty good shape, actually. Okay, so we're done with that. Uh, 
and my favorite, this hammer has been through lots. What is this, plastic side? Here's one of the O-rings. It's a square one, I haven't seen that. Maybe I gotta look at my gaskets and see. So there's the O-ring. You could keep it with the parts to remind you when you clean this and put it together. Oh, here's the other O-ring. Right there, right? So that helps. And then I bought new toolboxes, so you're gonna have to bear with me as I remember how I rearranged it. My favorite drift, which is filthy. See, even the tools should be kept clean, even though this is all used stuff. Not. It's coming. And this drift has a nice small point that, that won't mushroom out the edge of the bolt or anything. Okay. When it popped, did you see it popped there? So here comes the shaft. Always look at stuff, a little bit of thread slivers here from over torque or gosh knows what. You know, I'm big, big Vance Priest, the racer taught me. You can, let's see if you can get it out now. Here's a spring. The spring goes up against, ah, the spring goes against the nut side, right? But there's a washer that goes down first because you wouldn't want a spring pressing against raw aluminum here. So the washer goes in, then the spring. This lets you, this is intake. So here's that thing I was saying, you notice there's no holes anywhere. This is just a nice, simple, uh, you can now get an idea how shaky they are, you know, how worn this is. Ooh, nice and tight. It's, just, it's a very low wear thing. And a lot of folks don't even care, right? They don't even measure it. But when this is loose, you get a lot of oil blowing out here. You lose oil pressure kind of in the top, but it's a flow system more than anything else. So it's a question. I used to pull these out, especially if I was gonna sand all this. But when you pull them out, when you put them in, you know, if you need to go a little bit far, then you're pulling the distance between the, the tube, where the tube goes, the oil tube goes. So that, that can cause a problem. So I think I'm just going to leave that. My dad used to say discretion is the better part of valor. Are you watching this? Okay. Oh, let's do the plastic side. Oh, this one's coming a little easier. There we go. And like I said, work out of the box. Now you know where that stuff will be next time you need it. So, here's this rocker. Okay. Not scored up, a little scoring, but no, oh no, that was just uh, oil. You see there's a little weep hole here, right? All this stuff you're gonna wanna clean meticulously and blow out. Here's this spring. Kind of compare the springs collapse. No. This is the nice thing about well, one of the many nice things. Here's the washer about Sportsters compared to big bikes. Big bikes have a single cam down low and all these funny angularities getting the push rods up. Sportsters, three cams, ground, you know, gears all in a line so that the push rods are all in the same plane. So there is no funny side loads, which is why they can use these springs and stuff here where you wouldn't see that on a big bike. Ah. Okay, so here's the exhaust side of this back head. See that tiny little thing right there? You can just barely see it. Matter of fact, let's get the handy cam. Hopefully it'll focus. Uh, it's not that good of a picture. We'll see how it looks. 
And if I remember right, you can get this exhaust over on the other rocker boxes intake because they'll swap around. And then you won't be getting this little oil squirt over the exhaust valve. So while we're here, So that's one. I'll do the other one just so, because <laughs> I got to take this stuff apart anyway. I'll leave the, the O-rings here to remind myself. Although this is why it's nice to have the parts book, right? You flip the parts book open, check, 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 check. You know what you're doing. Okay. Here. It's all dull gray. Don't chrome aluminum in general, but never chrome these old rocker boxes. First off. It's old casting. It's not billet like the wheels that they get away with chroming because it's billet aluminum and a big giant ingot that they carved with a machine. This is a casting. And like my Emmy buddy says, castings are mush. Even if it's not porous enough to let oil weep through, especially once it's used like this one, there's oil everywhere in this thing and the plater will not be able to get it out and the chrome's gonna peel. You can polish these. We'll do that, you know, it'll be a few months. We'll go and polish these and you can get them near chrome. They don't have that bluish tint. And it is a shame because they do get hot with the motor. They will get this grayish look here. The factory polishes this and they polish this little corner, right? You can see that's it. This they barely touch. You know, well, you can see here a little bit. They don't do anything up here. I've spent, it takes a lot of time when you're young, right? You don't matter. Uh, and, and the secret with polishing, just to foreshadow what's going to go on, lots of heavy grit, right? A lot more 80 grit than 600 grit. The 80 grit is where you get everything true and smooth and, and the scratch is uniform. Then you go 120, 240, 400, you know, 320, 400, 600. And then I used to come off a of 600 and... Uh, go right to the polishing wheel, which is a real wino setup I got with a, with a buffing wheel screwed on to an old junk motor and some, st I use stainless compound instead of the finer compounds because it cuts quick and I'm lazy. Um, the, the headache is it's so easy to, to carve this, you know, you, these sharp edges all get worn down as you're sanding and stuff. So this time I would get some maybe button head screws and bolt those in or make sure I've got a washer and a bolt here, sacrificial, that I know I'm going to grind a little bit. Uh, what other thing? There was something I wanted to tell you folks. Oh, just clearance here. Okay. Remember the fun that we had. <laughs> Once again, I can't remember my own toolbox. Here it is. So here's a half round file, right? You can go here and... You can kind of see, right, it's shining up. Uh, if that's too slow, where do I got them? Here. These, whoop, these sanding wheels, you know, in a drill. And the sanding wheel fits here real nice. Then this is uh, another little head that where they're separate loose. Can you see them? little hollow ones and you put it on and it's got a thing in there. I've got a die grinder. Uh, I'd be hesitant to take a, like a tungsten carbide bit and carve, but definitely like it notes there, right? Write it down to remind yourself in a month when you get to putting this all together, uh, grind this down here. Can I show you? Can you see it? There's a real hard lip here. Let's see if I can light it up for you. Oops, wrong, wrong, right. There. See it right there? So that might have been the lip that was keeping that head bolt from coming out. We're going to cure that. You, you don't want to grind, you know, you can feel here how thick it is. You obviously don't want to punch a hole in it because then you're in deep trouble. But just cleaning this up, making it smooth is one thing just to get the, the head bolt out. So, what do you think? Just set it back on. Let's get this stuff back. Let's 
let's get this other one. Yowza. Which is important. Same thing, get the, mind you'll use the deep well. Of course, never put it on drill. <laughs> See, this is why it's good to do stuff by hand. You can see, wow, that one was tight. This is one you might make a note. Hey, this one was tight. Something's going on. The bolt's bad. The thread's bad. Maybe somebody put Loctite. I just put new batteries in this. Obviously not new enough. I haven't used this in a while, so it gets... Uh, Oh, the smoking again. Obviously, I love when stuff, oops. The trick of the Hansons is the square drive goes up. It took me a while to figure out. That's how you know you got the right thing. Run it a little to cool it off. How's our audio, by the way? Yeah, we're okay. So we got this stuck one. There's just something about a wrench, you know? I mean, yeah, I know. See, these are all new. Uh, some purists, right, especially it was in old 60s, oh, uh, I want the 30, 35 or whatever, it's gotta be, this is home, you know, well, actually Ace Hardware or Orchard Supply Hardware. And, and my personal thing of an AN, Army, Navy, instead of SAE, Society of Automotive Engineers, you got to get them on Amazon or someplace special. And let's see if we can get this guy. That drill is just so weak. This might be my chance to throw that DeWalt away to punish them for changing to a 20 volt system and obsoleting the 18 volt. And look, see, feel when you work, look, when you work. I don't see anything wrong there. Here's a washer. Here's the heads. Everything's new here like we expected. Everything's used here. This is probably on me. I probably, like I said, I got a whole bunch of motors and Seriani front ends from a machinist buddy in San Jose decades ago. So it's still got some. So, sorry for the dead air. All right, same thing, these are, oh, let's get the corks out. Sky cam, oh, there's one cork, oh, there's the other cork. I know I'll remember the corks. This one, yeah, kind of stiff. I guess maybe just oh, put away wet, you know, run hard, put away wet, put away wet and just, Decades of the oil congealing and hardening. When it's rebuilt, I use uh, here. Same theory, I used to use the pots of lithium grease. That's what I saw the engine builders doing in San Jose. Uh, and a bike will run a long time, even if you forget to put oil in it, you know, on lithium grease. It doesn't have fiber in it, so it doesn't, you know, pollute stuff. I used to use the pot, you know, and get the brush. Same problem, all the crap in the shop falls into that bucket and you're ladling on bead blast residue and carborundum. This way it's in a tube. So I've taken to this. So putting stuff together, we'll be using this lithium, we'll be using lithium grease, but the tube. That's my little tip there. Where are we? I guess we're back to wrenching, five eighths. Let's see. <laughs> Trying to get the sky cam aligned. I mean, if I was trying to make flat rate or something, or guys brag, you know, I can do it in 12 seconds and you can do it in 13, that's kind of nonsense, you know? If it's your own bike, 
and that's kind of who I'm aiming stuff at, although I guess professional mechanic never hurts to watch other stuff. The happy feeling when that pops. Oh. Ah, shaft is turning. And as I turn it, I can feel on this side. So you're going to get a real, like I say, I'm actually happy. That's why I'm glad I did this second one. Even though I say, oh, it's just like the first one. No, that's, the shaft is turning. So that unscrews this. See, so you, you can't put a wrench here, right? It's unscrewing. You can look here. There's really nothing to grab. Let's try that first trick, but with a steel hammer, the trusty 40 year old. Okay, you get a real time preview of I knew exactly where to go for the impact wrench. I just didn't know it would be buried under a bunch of other tools. Here we go. This DeWalt has served me well. It's not too powerful. Uh, it's powerful enough that when I did a clutch, you know, there's that little sleeve in the clutch that the uh, Kickstarter slides on. I actually belled it out and closed up the distance from the back of the clutch. To, so it's strong enough and it's kind of not as controlled as I'd like, but let's get this stuff put away. Come up here. We got to get from other direction, other direction. Here, from a half inch, unless I happen to have a half inch 5 8 I do. And it's an impact wrench. How about that? So much for necking down to a 3 8 and using a regular socket. I've got a real, it's one of those things, you know, I, you end up with a couple sockets that you need. And you think you're good, but one of these days. That's weird. R is the upper one. I didn't remember that. Let's see if it works. Oh, don't do that. Bing. You know, a few hundred bucks. I have gotten them out with that hammer trick. Oh, and I'm not being careful. The thin little washer. See, and you want this. This is one of the things of, you know, let's, let's make it easy for that nut to back off. And that's why they'll even get the anises to show you because it's your friend. Permatex, not, not in the, uh, the way I, I do this, I cut the bottoms out so that I can, I leave them in the thing to remind me what's where instead of having a bunch of tubes like I used to in a little toolbox. So there you go, Permatex. Anti-seize, same principle. I used to use the pot, where junk would fall in it, and it's a brush. And make it. Now with the tube, it's never contaminated. You just squirt it. So obviously going back together, antifreeze, antifreeze, anti-seize on the threads, anti-seize on these. Vance Breeze, the racer buddy, told me that anti-seize actually works a little like Loctite. Oh, wrong. Five eighths, love my Hanson. Go check. These Hanson things are, are not cheap, by the way. We'll put this back here just to speed things up. See, working out of the box. Oops. I do use a rubber hammer even with this drift, which I've forgotten where I found it. Here it is. Hmm. Right. Well, that's why I have the rubber, because when you hit it directly. Put in a little bit of plastic. Oh, look at that. Did I not uh, screwed up the other thin little washer? When I hit it, it popped off. 
All right. Never, never a steel hammer, right? Because you're going to mushroom this thing out and then you got, then it's never going to back off nice. Okay. Here's one of the O-rings. Oh, we did this and we didn't, got ahead of myself. Hopefully I'll be able to get this done. We'll see. No. <laughs> okay, notice bearing, bearing surface here, bearing surface here. When you're gonna grab this in a vise, grab it here. I'm gonna go over here and do it off camera, real time. Very carefully. Let's see if I can get this cap. Yep, it wasn't on hard. So I just have, so did I leave any scars here? Not too bad, a little bit. But, but on the bearing surfaces here and here, fine. So meanwhile, let's get this cap here, here. And we got this. This is because the oil lines here, the oil plug thing, you know, this is the intake side. There's a spring, looks okay. Here's the washer. Nice, they're always fine. Here's this, how's it go like that? You can kind of get an idea. You know, is it nice and tight? I guess the coolest thing would be to pressurize this with oil and watch how much leaks out the ends. Like I say, it, it can be a slop there that won't be the best for valve timing. And, you know, it screws that up a little bit. But valve timing is so crazy in these old sports. There's the thickness of the gaskets changed the angles. So this feels pretty good. All this will be usable. Back to square one here. Out comes the thing. Spring looks okay. Washer looks fine. Rocker comes up. Feels good. So, you know, of course, everything's so gummy. That's why this thing was so hard to turn. The oil's so old in this. Could have stood being fired up, I guess. Can I show you this principle now? Here is the exhaust, right? So when you're going to put this together, well, you'll keep, keep stuff together anyway. But, okay, here's the exhaust side. Here's the side with the oil thing. Here's a little tiny hole here, right? So you know that goes here. Now, if I remembered right, the danger, Will Robinson, this is the exhaust. This is the intake. Here's the intake from the other head. Notice. Identical, except for that little dink there. So you'd end up with, you'd be squirting on the intakes, probably causing oil consumption and burning. So put that back, put this here, think about where we're at. Same deal, you know, oh, it's even a bigger. See, they only machined up to here and stopped. So there's a big lip here. That's not good, right? So obviously just taking that off would be good. And then, like I say, you can actually feel here and get an idea how thin the casting's getting. Even getting it, you know, 50,000, you might get some oil weeping from castings or porous. And these, I believe, are sand castings. But they'll, you'll be astonished when we do a polish show in a few months, how nice these clean up. I still have to decide, do I pull this off or not when I polish? But like I said, the first ones I did years and years ago, I'd round these off. With the, with the sander. Let me show you. Let's put this back. If I'll need to cover up the head. Let's get another hefty. Nobody pays me anything. I wouldn't accept money from sponsors. You know, if there's, if there's ads running from YouTube, that's, that means I got enough views. They're running ads on my stuff even though I haven't monetized it. So no wonder Google's got a billion dollars every minute. All right, the bags are nice because they organize stuff, but they also keep stuff clean, even though it's dirty. You know, you obviously don't, if you clean it, you don't put it back in that bag, throw it away. Bags are cheap, right? And what was I gonna show you? Let's get stuff put away here. 
click, click, oops, wrong. Like I said, when you have your first wrench drive out in a Volkswagen in the cow, $70 snap-on wrench back in the 70s, that's when you learn about keeping stuff where it belongs. All right, with the parts book, with stuff like that, you should be okay. I'm gonna pause the video and think about anything else I wanna talk about real quick and then get back, okay? I remember what I wanted to show you. I don't wanna be a tease, oh, I'll polish these heads later, months from now. I'll give you just a quick idea. When I did, the, you know, 30 years ago, in fact, it was, I, this has been replaced. I wore the first one out. This is why I love Makita, they last forever. And though this one, I didn't wear out, I broke one little piece of plastic. It's probably a replaceable part. So I'm a Makita person now, not a DeWalt person. Uh, I use this, you know, here, you gotta be careful. This is my theory now of like, now put a bolt here. So when, when you sand, there's no way you can smooth down this because if you grind this surface, now you're, you know, tilting the stuff, it won't mount right. You gotta stay away from the gasket surfaces, right? That's critical. But you can do quite a lot. You can kind of copy what they did here the front here, but now you can go here and, and get more. I bought some years ago that I have never used because I didn't polish, I got too lazy to polish heads. So rocker boxes. This Porter cable, it's got this little triangle, they call it a profile sander. And there's all this stuff that comes with it. It's got a little pointy end that, you know, might be a little easier to get in to places. So this was my main tool and you can do it. And then don't forget about the best tool, right? Piece of wood with, with staples on it. And then all of the, you know, like, like these things, you, you tighten this and it, it expands, or no, you tighten this nut and it expands. Here's the little one I showed you before. That lets you get in on a drill. Uh, these flapper wheels. Here's a Scotch-Brite thing, you know, lets you get in. And obviously it's all the little corners and stuff that are hard and take time. And you, but it, it's the core stuff where you do most all of the work. Once you get the course and get all of the, the roughness off and get it smooth, I, even though I say to do this, there was still a little waviness in mine. It wasn't optically like a glass mirror that you could see perfect out there. So it's still a little tricky. But like I say, I always tend to think it needs more of the rough sanding before you start, oh, quick, I want it to shine. I want, or they call it color, when you start seeing the color in the aluminum and reflections. So, there was something over here. Oh, I got a expensive and beautiful Fordham die grinder, right? It's got this motor, a cable, a head with a Jacob's chuck in it, foot pedal, variable speed. It's almost too small. I mean, are you gonna see these little insides? If you wanna get, you know, if you have a methamphetamine problem and like shiny stuff, well, great. You know, you might wanna spend that much time. I just like, I, li I like cleaning them up more than the factory, which just does this surface, this surface, and I, well, they might do a little here. It's just so grungy, I can't see. It is nice when you get this, especially because I like some of my bikes are more chopper-like with the peanut tank and you can see all of this stuff. Uh, one other thing we should mention about rocker boxes, there's no such thing as a shovel head sportster. There are 900cc sportsters, 71 and earlier, that the rocker box is identical in every way except it's filled in here and it looks the same shape as a shovel head big bike rocker box, but it's not the same. It's this same, I believe they interchange, right? You can put new ones on the old, old ones on the new, but they're always iron heads. There's no shovel head sportster, no such thing. And so if you do have the one that's you know solid here, that's a 900cc, like I say, I'm pretty sure they, they interchange everywhere. So that was one other little quick tip. Let's put this on the right way. We'll get our sanders back when we're done with that. This thing keeps falling. I gotta improve this, it keeps falling. So that's rocker boxes. Uh, 
Next, we'll pull the cylinders off, get the pistons, get that. And I have ordered from Staples, of all places, really useful, that's the name of it, really useful storage bins. They're real strong. They got all these extra balusters or whatever you call it on the corners. You can stack them full of Harley parts this tall because I've done it. And I got a bunch with my stash, but I wanted to get some 64 liter big ones and 32 liter little ones to put all this stuff. It keeps them clean, keeps them organized. It'll go on the gorilla racks in the spare room. And we'll show you all that stuff next one when we get these pistons. Oh, maybe. Can you see this? I don't think I'm strong enough to drag. Oh, without the heads on, this is getting a bit lighter. I actually got the rubber bands that asparagus comes in and took the paper towel and put a rubber band around here. You know, if you're just doing a top end and you're not taking the cylinders off. Some guys stuff a shop towel down there. Another thing occurred to me, a real pain in the butt on these newer motors. All of my, almost all, I got an XR1000, but they got Kickstarters. So you can, you know, move the pistons up and down. You can do all that. This one, I think I'm going to get that big battery I used as a weight in one of the shows. And uh, that was a 3D printer show, but still. Uh, and I guess you just, I'll just touch the battery to the starter and see if I can, if I got to rock this motor and move it around. So that'll be a fun thing. All right. Okay. Enough is enough. Thank you so much. Sportster Paul here. Good luck with your Iron Sportster project. Bye now. Mm -hmm.